what we're trying to show is that for all values of r in the positive integers, meaning that r is greater than 0, r is not 0. That's important. And as we go back here to our Pascal's triangle, even though we can still use this drawing to find out that the sum of i to the 0 from i equal 1 to n is 1 times n is equal to n, we can see that in order to express n to the r plus 1 plus n to the r, for the rest of the rows of the Pascal's triangle, we have to sacrifice this one single row. But that's not the only reason why this closed formula cannot express the first row in this adjusted Pascal's triangle. But here we go. Here's the proof that the sum of i to the r is equal to this closed formula. I will show one line of the proof at a time. First is that we have sum of i to the r is equal to this. Notice that all of these sum to 0 and therefore this entire term is 0. Notice that this factor in this term is 0 to the r and we're assuming that r is greater than 0. So this is 0 and therefore this term is also 0. So all of this is 0. All of these terms sum to 0 and so therefore this factor is 1 and this factor is i to the r. So 1 times i to the r is i to the r and therefore i to the r is equal to all of this. Factoring through a negative 1 through the summation and these two terms and rearranging the n's, 1's, and i's like so. If we let f of x equal x minus 1 minus n and g of x equal x minus 1 to the r and that's why I put brackets here to kind of show that it has this form then sum of i to the r which we arguably have seen here is true is equal to this. So for example if we say f of n plus 1, well what is f of n plus 1? We just substitute n plus 1 in for the x and we get this factor here. g of n plus 1 is substituting n plus 1 into here which is this. And similarly substituting 1 into f gives you this and 1 into g gives you that. And also similarly here we have similar substitution. One of the main reasons I do this is to shorten the length of the proof. This is equivalent to this because we add this in and we negate it here so the total is 0 and we move this over here and keep this there. Next we factor out a negative 1 from this summation and also both of these terms to have this. We then factor out g sub n plus 1 from both of these terms here. We take note that the form of this is the same as, well, if we substitute n into this expression inside of the summation, we get this. So therefore, if we were going to expand the summation, where we substitute 1 from the left and then 2 and 3 and all the way, then n is the rightmost term we've written down. This is the last term. Well, the, neg the positive of this term is the last term because there's a plus sign in front of this summation here because all of this is inside of this parentheses with the negative on the outside. So therefore, the last term of this cancels with that to leave us with the summation of n minus 1 of this. So that allows us to get rid of this. Next, let's, let's model this summation and expand it a little bit. We first substitute 1 in for i, so we get f of 1 plus 1 is 2, and 1 for here, f of 1 times g of 2, and then we increment to i equals 2, and to get this term, and then we increment all the way until we get to n minus 1. n minus 1 plus 1 is n, so that's that n, n minus 1, is just n minus 1 here and n minus 1 plus 1 is n. So therefore, and, and we also write, rewrite these two terms here, so this is simply an expression of this summation, an expanded form. 
Next, we we'll factor out g from this term and that term using parentheses, and I switch the order of every single one of these binomials by pulling out a negative sign and making them positive. I'm going to move this term to the very end for the next step, just to let you know, but now I'm going to multiply these two together, these two together to get this, and I'm going to distribute g2 through gn inside of every one of these binomials across. By the associative property of addition, I can just move parentheses. So I'm going to remove this closed parentheses here so that these two become in the same parentheses. And I'm going to do that all the way across. And in this case, now the neglected term f sub n g sub n plus 1 it's going to have, well, when we, when we expand this, it will be f sub n, g sub n, if you see the pattern here. Now, since we have a clear pattern here, we can express this as a summation again. For visual purposes, I'll switch the order of these two terms inside of the expression of the summation. And I'll factor out f sub i. Now we're going to substitute back the bracketed values in for f of i, g of i, and g of i plus 1 into this summation here. We know that sum of i to the r from i 1 to n is equal to this summation. After we substituted f sub i for this expression, g sub i for this expression, and g sub i plus 1 for this expression. So we just do the reverse now just so that we get back to where we need to be. All of this work was just abbreviated to save us written work. So now that we've seen this, all I do is I put this negative inside of this factor inside of the summation. So I change the signs of all of the numbers in that factor to get that the sum of i to the r is equal to this summation. Now this summation is very well known, so in other words from the beginning of this proof until now, this is my own proof, which could be the w original way they proved this, I'm not sure. There might be a more elegant way, but this is my own proof for this summation, that this summation is equal to this summation. Now the problem with this summation is that it has i to the r inside of it, so if you have i to the r is equal to i to the r, you really can't use a recursive relation you have to have i to the r is equal to the i to the r minus 1 or i to the r minus 2 or so and so forth all the way down. So we have to try to find a way to make that i to the r minus 1 at most. And that's what the next step is. First we're going to expand some of the terms inside of it. And now we expand i minus 1 to the r power and we multiply by n minus i minus 1. See this n minus i minus 1 is this n minus i minus 1. And this term is this term. So all of this is just this expanded, and we model it. Just to simplify things, the binomial of r over 0 is just 1. So this is i to the r minus 0, or i to the r. I next factor out this i to the r term and this r over 1 term binomial from this expansion. So this i to the r needs to be multiplied by this, and that is here. And it's minus because this minus carries to that positive coefficient 1 in front of i to the r. So that is this term. This term, when I factor it out, becomes positive. And when I factor it out, I have to multiply by n minus i and plus 1 and so I get this. And then I subtract because r over 2 is plus so when I have a minus it's still minus plus r over 2 and I just rewrite that. And all I do now is I take this and I multiply that 1 in and this i i to the first power times i to the r minus 1 power becomes i to the r minus 1 plus 1 or i to the r. That's what this is. And this just carries down here. And this 1 just multiplies with that to become itself. 
and these two cancel so that I'm left with this. By looking at this we can see that the only term with the r power is this term right here which is this term right here in this step. Therefore if we add r i to the r inside of the summation where everything in this summation as we have claimed and shown so far is equal to i to the r. So if we add r i to the r in the summation we eliminate this power of r here and the greatest power of r next following is r minus 1. And then we have r minus 2 and all the way down. So we have i to the r plus r i to the r, which we're trying to do. And when we factor out i to the r from both of these, we get 1 plus r. Since 1 plus r doesn't have any i in it, we can factor it out of the summation because it's considered a constant. The variable of the summation is i. So all we need to do is multiply by 1 over r plus 1 to compensate for adding r i to the r inside of the summation. So all of this work was just to find this. So we say that sum of i to the r from i equal 1 to n is equal to this. Where we added, we, where we did all of this work to find out that all we have to do is add an r i to the r inside of the summation and in order to not change the algebraic value of the summation, we simply can divide by 1 over r plus 1. Now we just expand this a little bit, where I'll keep n and plus 1 together, but I'll multiply this minus i by this expression and put it here and rewrite r i to the r here. Now we can put this into its own summation and both of these into another summation. Now this is an identity, the sum of i to the r minus i minus 1 to the r. If we expand it out we can see that it's equal to n to the r. So therefore this whole summation here is n to the r. So n to the r times n plus 1 is here. And then we just rewrite the summation there. Moving along, again we expand this i minus 1 to the r right here when we rewrite everything else. Now I'm going to distribute this negative 1 into everything inside of this brackets to get rid of those brackets. Now I'm going to multiply this i to the first power by every term in this parentheses. So I'm simply going to be adding a 1 to every exponent of i in every single term. That's what I do right here. All I do here is say that the binomial of r over 0 is 1 the binomial of r and 1 is r. We can see that this is i to the r plus 1 and this is i to the r plus 1 but it's a minus so these two cancel. In addition this is r i to the r and this is minus r i to the r so they cancel as well. All that's left are these terms which I rewrite here. I put a bracket around the 2 and then the 3 and 3 and r and r to show that these values are the same for all of the terms. So therefore this is where we can introduce a second summation to express this expanded form summation in a compact formula. Also note that r is the maximum index of the series and 2 is the first index of the series which should look familiar. So if we assign a summation variable k, we start at 2 and we go to r. 2 is here and here, all the way to r and r. We express this, the binomial just like this. 
Since the first value of k is an even number, and since the first term of the series is positive, we can say that minus 1 to the k represents the sign of every single term in the sum. And I put in brackets here, we start with 2, 3, 4, and so forth. R stays the same as well as plus 1. So k is the only thing that changes. And we start with k equal 2, which is here, so this is k. Finally, we can expand this to be n to the r plus 1 plus n to the r. And I just simply rewrite r plus 1 in parentheses to show that it matches this r plus 1 and that r plus 1 just to make it more uniform. But that concludes the proof that sum of i to the r from i equal 1 to n is equal to this double series. And from this double series, we can construct that adjusted Pascal's triangle to visually and easily construct a summation formula for any integer power sum formula, f of n. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.